Hey everyone, welcome to episode 519 of the Venom Vlog, and I'm just recording this quick new intro because, as you know in the last episode, I had to cut our list, uh, you know, of coincidences in Donny Keats' run, I had to cut it into two episodes because we were just running really long, and I didn't want you guys to have to commit to a, a full hour episode at once, um, you know, and I've gotten a lot of feedback about making hour-long episodes, so I'm, I'm trying to work on that and listen to some of that feedback, and I know there are some people who do like it, some who don't, but either way, in this case, I felt like we were giving away a lot of information, and I didn't want to dump it all on you guys at one time, and we brought broke it up into two parts. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. And uh, I also want to point out that Donnie Cates himself watched our part one episode, and I was really happy about that. That was awesome. He had very kind words to say, and uh, he also offered to come onto the show. So probably this weekend, I'm going to rally uh, Eddie's mullet together again, and uh, and also get Donnie Cates, and and we'll, you know, have a conversation about, you know, just stuff in general. Obviously, the, the content of the two videos, part one and part two, I imagine he'll want to make some comments about what we do in this video as well. And I'd love to give him a place to, you know, to speak. And, and talk to you guys. I know a lot of you out there are big, big fans of his. And like I said in our last video, our video wasn't meant to, you know, come at him or start any drama or anything like that. It was me merely just to say, hey, look, cool, these things happened before so in some regard and on a basic level maybe. And uh, we wanted to bring it to your attention because maybe some of you as fans out there might want to check it out. And since, you know, Eddie and I didn't even know some of these things were actual references until we did a lot of digging, we, you know, we're like, hey, yeah, we'll give Donnie the benefit of the doubt. We didn't even know it existed and we're big Venom fans too. So, uh, so yeah, it's so that's what we're doing. We're just having fun here, and I'm really glad you guys are enjoying that, and you liked the first video, and hopefully you will, you will like this episode, too. So uh, without further ado, let's get right to it. Um, all right, so after that, after Scarlet Spider, we do have um, a little bit more modern. Again, right before Venom Island, we have Dark Carnage, and this is going to be two topics. We're going to talk about Dark Carnage and, a, and a, like a, the idea of a symbiote army, uh, but let's start with Dark Carnage. What are your thoughts on on you know Ryan Stegman's design of Dark Carnage and where have we seen something similar before <laughs> yeah I, well I know uh, a lot of the Venom fans were calling it Maleficent because <laughs> that's he looked just like uh, Angelina Jolie from that movie but it it more looked I mean identical <laughs> to the Carnage in the on Spider-Man Unlimited series in the 90s cartoon that just Google the images. Don't watch the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, and I did an episode of, uh, when I was reviewing, uh, uh, you know, Absolute Carnage, where I com I made that comparison as well, and uh, and some people were like, "Oh, wow, I never thought of that," or "Oh, I've never seen that show before." But yeah, the the Dark Carnage without the crown, obviously, um, but the Dark Carnage in that book looks very similar to um, to this other one because the other one looks a little bit more xenomorphish than Ryan Stegman's version. Uh, to be fair, but they do have exposed rib cage, um, you know, uh, a spinal cord that's separating the legs from the torso. So it's it's very similar in that regard. I mean, it's a spitting image, uh, and th it also appeared in the comic books too. In the Spider Man, they did a, I believe it, I believe the comics tied into the, to the story or or writing, you know, an alternate universe of the of the cartoon because I I found images of it online as well. Yeah, the Spidey Unlimited uh, comic book was it was like a a loose continuity to the show, but it also like dipped into other universes and stuff. So yeah, it was it was pretty cool. It was a good book. Yeah, I mean, it, like better than the show was at least. I th but that one may have been a little tougher than Dark Carnage because they shot a hole right through him and he was fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, because Dark Carnage <laughs> he gets killed with one sword through the stomach. Um, yeah, so. But moving for you, so Dark Carnage, yeah. So we noticed some similarities there. But again, you know, just happy coincidences, maybe whatever it is. And again, not on Donnie. This is just things that happen in Donnie's book. Could have been a Ryan Stegman thing. He's the one who designed Dark Carnage. Um, but one thing he designed, and they, I think they worked on together, was the spirals on their forehead. And you brought a, a book. This is going into the Symbiote Army now. You brought to my attention a book that I also didn't know existed, written by Al Ewing. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, the the contest of champions run from 2015. If if you haven't read it, it's actually a pretty good story. Uh, it comes apart a little at the end, like you know most, <laughs> most runs tend to do. But it's actually pretty good. It's it's got some alternate universe characters in it. There's an alternate version of Eddie, which is a really funny take on Eddie. Uh, he's he's a little nuts, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, but there's uh yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things in uh in contest of champions um and there's a whole army uh, that's called the symbioids which is these 
black bodied uh, with symbiotes with void powers in them, and they got these big circles right and dead center of their forehead. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah. Almost exact. Not exactly. It's not a spiral, obviously, but it is a circle shape right in the center of their face. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they almost look like a cyborg ninja from Metal Gear Solid a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, but it's just an aesthetic again where we're just like, oh, and I had no idea this book existed. So when you told me about it, yeah, I went and read it, and I loved it too. I, Eddie in that universe killed Peter Parker, but here's Peter's voice in his head, um, which is great. And then he wears Spider-Man's costume as a cape, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> such, such, a good, such a good book. But but yeah, you know, uh, but Eddie pointed out the army to me. He's like, oh, the symbioids is this army that Maestro is in control of. And, uh, and they're just an army of symbiotes. And it got me thinking about Absolute Carnage and how in Absolute Carnage, that's what Carnage was doing. He was, you know, kind of like he did, but he also did other things, right? Like Carnage USA, you said. Yeah, yeah, he had a whole town. And, yeah, right. And in and, and, and his defense on, on this one in particular, mindless armies are a longstanding trope in a lot of things. But yeah, it, it's just, it's just it, it fit the category of the, of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. This one especially, just like one of the other ones that we talked about um, with, uh, you know, with the the Fantastic Four, where it's like, yeah, this is probably just a big coincidence where, you know, the symbiote army is, it's just a trope now. Everybody does it. Ever since, like, Planet of the Symbiotes, after that, they're like, well, let's, how can we squeeze in an army of symbiotes? So they did it in Web of Shadows, a video game where there was an invasion. They did uh, Venom, Inc. was uh, Lee Price created an army of symbiotes, uh, technically. Yeah, his loogie babies that he spit on. <laughs> yeah, his loogie babies, that's right. Um, <laughs> if you read uh, the Spider-Punk uh, from Spider-Verse one-shot short story uh, about Hobie Brown, it's like he's punk rock Spider-Man, and he's fighting against a police force, and the police force are all symbiote. They're police in sim- like covered in symbiotes. Um, and then, obviously, Spider-Man Reign, which is another outside Spider-Man story, outside continuity, uh, in that one, the book ends with the symbiote being Spider-Man's major threat and villain, and it creates a symbiote army that's taken over New York, and Sandman creates a Sandman army out of himself to fight back against it. Uh, it's really cool. So, yeah, this isn't on Donnie per se. This is just, again, like you said, it fit the conversation. We're, we're having conversation about things that, oh, this has actually happened before, and it gives us an opportunity to point out these other stories, in case you guys don't know about them, to go check them out. So i got to give you credit, Eddie. Like, when you pulled that out, I was like, Whoa! I didn't even think about like they didn't even think about that, and I never heard of Contest of Champions, and I'm so glad you put that on my radar for sure. Yeah, and there's a little bonus one in there for all you Batman fans. Uh, Spider-Man Reign had the first Spidey dong. If you have the first print, <laughs> <laughs> so Batman's been stealing too. So to... <laughs> yeah, there you go. There, yeah, Batman had a uh, in damned his first his first issue of that his his dong showed up. But yeah, there is spider dong in, in rain, and they also talk about they get very detailed about uh, how Mary Jane died, and it's really a weird conversation. Yeah, uh, that book's pretty pricey if you have it or if you see it on the wild. And that gets the first print scoop it up. Yeah, it's it's worth it's worth a check out, and I think at some point we'll talk about it on the show for sure since there's so much symbiote action in it. Um, so yeah, man, symbiote armies, circles on their faces. You know, we've gone through Scarlet Spiders and Dark Carnages, Dark Surfers. That's the other thing. There's Dark Surfer, Dark Carnage, Dark uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of darkness. Um, and, uh, to, I can touch a little more on that Contest of Champions. There's some other couple things in here that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Venom gets his hand cut off. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, you right. Island fans. Yeah, <laughs> a- Ares, the God of War, cuts off Venom's hand, uh, much like his hand. It's a, it's the other hand, but it's still a yeah. hand that gets cut off just like in Venom Island. But it grows back. <laughs> yeah, and this one it grows back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then Maestro is just controlling all them symbiotes with the uh, oh oh oh, and I and wait, I you know what? This is the, this is a perfect thing too. This contest of champions also will lead us right into our next conversation, which is Venom Hulks ah. and. You know the famous Venom Hulk from uh, Absolute Carnage before? Well, he he was not the first. Uh, there was actually a Venom Hulk in Contest of Champions. Number three, uh, it was Rick Jones, though, to be fair. so. And sure. uh, But yeah, yeah, Venom Hulk was such a big deal when it came out. Uh, I mean, man, it, people were pre-ordering that book. They were uh, 
there was that special variant with uh, designs, and uh, you know he looks sweet. <laughs> I gotta say, and, and it's a fun idea, but it was fun well, well before <laughs> absolute carnage. <laughs> right. What was the first time we saw a Venom Hulk? That would be what if uh, I believe it's volume two number four. Yeah, volume two number four, and what it was called. What if Spider Man was possessed by the alien symbiote? Uh, yes, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I got it right here in front of me. And I think it the suit jumps around a couple times in that book, but it ends up on Bruce Banner, and he turns into the Hulk and uh, and is Venom. And I know some people are gonna go, yeah, bro, but th- you know, it didn't happen in the six one six universe. That's an alternate universe. It's like our this isn't our point. Our point here isn't to say this has been done in the six one six. The point is is that hey, we've seen these things before, and not in an accusatory way. Some of them. So the, my issue with Donnie is when he posts something like that and then people do say, hey, that's cool. That was in what if number whatever. Um, or, you know, it appeared in Hulk Agents of Smash, the cartoon, uh, a couple years ago when when uh, I think it was Red Hulk, She-Hulk, uh, Amadeus Cho Hulk and uh, and regular Hulk all got turned into Venoms and or got symbiotes, uh, you know, possessed them. So, uh, so, yeah, of course, these things happened before. But I feel like Donnie Cates' reaction to those He's very defensive. Um, he doesn't, go, he, you know, I feel like if I was in his position, if it did inspire me, the, in, the instant reaction is, hey, yeah, you know what? That actually, that issue inspired me. I thought it was really cool when that happened. And I wanted to bring that back and do it in the 616 universe. So, you know, that's why we put it in here. And I hope you guys like what we did. To me, that's the, the easy response. Uh, but I feel like a lot of times he goes for the path of most resistance where he just argues with people. <laughs> and, and, and to me, I'm just like, Dude, I'm, I know some people come across as d bags when they bring this stuff up to you, but there is a way you can mention it and be like, "Hey, look, you know, it inspired me." Or just say you can be fine. You know, I believe him if he says it didn't inspire him. Um, I totally, you know, I, I can I can believe it. A lot of these things, like you said earlier, it's easy for these to be in a blind spot, right? For for hardcore fans. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, just don't don't feed the trolls. <laughs> yeah, don't feed the trolls, right? And I feel like sometimes the way he does it. It, it it does it magnifies the situation and it leads to arguments yeah. and all the and accusations and it's like look man we're all here we just have fun we like comic books and that's all we're doing here we're just talking about things in this run or in other stuff that donnie's worked on that we've kind of seen before and like i mentioned like even the null thing is it a, a one-to-one ratio comparison to a tomahawk or a tomahawk rex no it's not a one-to-one it's a i'm just you know it's a base idea a robot wants to free his god and so he's looking in search for his god to free him that reminded me of the grendel look you know trying to free you know null so that's all it is i mean even i posted a picture and i'll put it up on screen right now of of dracula untold which is this uh, this uh, evans was it is it luke evans i can't remember his name um i don't know it's he, the most nully looking <laughs> armor i've ever seen <laughs> We were talking about, because the first time I saw Noel, I was like, I've seen that before. Not exactly, but I've seen that before. And if you look at a lot of Castlevania artwork, you'll notice similarities between their version of Dracula sitting on a throne, holding a sword, and uh, wearing all black with some red on him. You'll notice that. That's a pretty standard trope for, for Dracula. We know Donny Cates is into to, uh, vampires because a lot of his indie books either have something to do with God the antichrist or vampires like that's pretty much what he writes exclusively when he's not writing for marvel um so so uh so okay he's inspired by by vampires but when i saw this armor this picture here uh from dracula untold i was like i knew it i knew i seen it somewhere where someone was wearing black armor and they had wings and they had a, a dragon on their chest because that's one of the things and what me and you are we're going to do another episode of things that donny cates has kind of soft retconned and we'll talk about the dragon logo in that episode. But yeah, what do you think of? The, did you see that image I sent you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it and it looks it looks sweet. It looks badass. Uh, <laughs> it makes you want to see the movie that movie. But I, I from what I've heard, don't see it. I heard it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not a great movie. I, I have a I have a guilty pleasure appreciation for it, but it's it's not a it's not really that good of a movie. But I do like the guy who plays Dracula. In it. He is actually really good. Yeah, yeah, he, he looks he looks like a good Dracula. I, if I put on Twitter yesterday, I was like, "What do you guys think? Is this is Noel inspired from this? And if not, do you think this guy should be cast as Noel?" Yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, dude, he's awesome. He's in Fast and the Furious too. A lot of you guys might recognize him from that. Um, I've never watched one of those movies. How dare you? How un-American! <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and uh, so Venom Hulk. Any last words on Venom Hulk? Uh, not. 
other than no, no. Well, other oh. than it, it should, he should have did a little bit more. <laughs> oh yeah, Venom Hulk was yeah, it was like three pages of fun, and then meth, and then it was like, yeah, that was a bummer. That was a real letdown, actually, Venom Hulk. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Read that if you can get a chance to get all that. What if because uh, the symbiote hops onto about everything. I well, think it's on Gal- Galactus in there too. <laughs> there's also we forgot to mention this. Um, I think in Venomized there was a, a Hulk that was a Venom, but yep. then he gets turned into a poison. But also one of your favorite stories and something I'm going to be talking on, about on the show very soon, which is uh, Circle of Four. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. That's when uh, Thunderbolt Ross is he's he's all roped up, and they have a Cullen Bunn run. He does a neat little twist on the new Fantastic Four. Um, and he takes Rolk in place of Hulk, and then he has X-23, who's in place of Sue, and he has Venom, who's in place of, as Flash Thompson Venom, in place of Spidey, and who's the flow? Ghost, a Ghost Rider. That, and that's the, uh, uh, her name slips yeah, my mind. Alejandra. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, who was just in the, the Venom book, which I was, I was, I was, real, I was surpri- pleasantly surprised to see her turn up in there. Uh, yeah. she, I guess she's the human torch or, or the ghost rider, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, they... and yeah, yeah. Well, there's a there's a point where they're fighting Blackheart where they need to combine their powers, like Power Rangers, and they're power stacking once again. And Rolk gets the symbiote and uh, the Spirit of Vengeance in them, and it's a big gnarly metal looking <laughs> ghost rider with flames and a symbiote. <laughs> does it, so what power does he get from X twenty three? Uh, edge edginess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he's nimble. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No. Circle of Four. I, I read it. I reread it recently, so I could do an episode on it coming up. And yeah, it's a fun story. But yeah, I notice that a lot. A lot of writers nowadays they they make. I feel like when writers make characters OP, it, it's a very amateur thing to do. I think a lot of writers think that adds depth to their characters. I disagree, but seeing a scene like that where it's kind of like an, a nod probably to Power Rangers is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I think in that run, that's when Pat Mulligan was unceremoniously killed in an alley. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's that's the thing. is Sometimes when they kill these characters, they, they do it like so haphazardly they're just like eh, and wang's dead and it's like oh, oh no leave. he was off he was off pale it's like oh yeah i killed him <laughs> oh poor pat yeah, mulligan blackheart yeah. blackheart did it he's dead don't worry about that <laughs> uh that's like when uh in in what was it wolverine enemy of the state they killed hornet from slingers and you never saw him you never saw him die you never saw him fight wolverine they were just like who's this and they're like oh it's hornet and they're like hornet who's that and he goes eh, some kid from a couple years ago and he's like he's he and i think hornet had a he had like a disability, uh, like uh, he had like cerebral palsy or something. So they were just like, "Oh yeah, he's some kid with cerebral palsy who was like a superhero." And I'm like, "Jesus, man! Like talk about heartless. <laughs> these, these these just kill him off panel. This kid with disabilities." Um, but that's Mark Millar, and me and you don't like Mark Millar. So yeah. Um, so what's the the one of the last things I guess we'll talk about since it's also symbiote related? Um, unless you have any last uh, things for Venom Hulk. No, no. I mean Venom Hulk. It's a it's a fun idea. I guess, but yeah, it. I don't know. I, yeah. I, it didn't do nothing for me really. <laughs> it won't it, be. It won't be the last time we see it because coming up in uh, even Maximum Venom the cartoon, we're going to see a Venom Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put put symbiotes on everything. It was fun, you know. I, I really enjoyed it for a while, but now, and I'm, I, you know, even as a diehard Venom fan, with all this Venom crap surrounding me in my room, I don't need to see symbiotes on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Well, speaking of symbiotes and everyone, here's one uh, a time where there was one less symbiote temporarily, uh, which is Carnage being digested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's something else that was touted as a... I, well, I don't know if so much of it was touted, but it was it was basically assumed that, oh no, we're, we're eating symbiotes, and, and it's, it's making me more powerful all throughout Absolute Carnage, and it happened a couple times prior to, <laughs> to Absolute Carnage. Absolutely. Um, one, like as far as eating symbiotes and growing in size, that happened in Planet of the Symbiotes, obviously. Um, Carnage grew to be like a 50-foot tall monster. Um, Lee Price did it in Venom, Inc. After he made all of his loogie venoms, there's a line where he says, why did I share this power when I could just take it all in for myself? He reabsorbs those loogies 
and and I think that would just make him back to regular size, but apparently it just increased his size. Um, yeah, one would think that. Yeah, and uh, I would have thought he would have gotten smaller and then just gotten you know back to regular venom size, but <laughs> but he actually grew to be like twenty feet tall, and and all the venoms had to team up and fight him and stuff uh, in Black Hat. Um, but uh, but there is a time where in Venom Island we we discussed that at the end of Absolute Carnage. Venom does absorb the Carnage symbiote and Carnage's voice is being heard in Eddie's head, but there was actually a time before where Eddie absorbed the Carnage symbiote, correct? Yes, yeah, that, uh, that spec- uh, not spectacular Spider-Man run, but I, I know it was the run where John Romita Jr. did the art. Uh, yeah, yeah, Eddie just said, I should have had, had enough of it, and he goes and he just rips the, car- the symbiote off and he eats it. He literally eats it. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't even have to. Like, you could just absorb it, but he straight up eats it. <laughs> um, and that, that's funny, and, and we're not going to get into, like, because, you know, we, we heard in uh, some of the recent comics, like, I think uh, Donnie Cates did this, where when he ingests something, he that's what creates the green saliva that pours out of his mouth. It's like ex, It's like excrement. So I'm so I'm like maybe he ate it hoping that he would just excrete it as poop, um, and as green saliva, if you're applying current uh, uh, thought process to the past. But I don't know what 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 are your thoughts of like when he ate it? Did you it's, read the rest of that story? Do you know the outcome of that? I'm pretty sure it was just gone, but it's had and it's a continuity thing with. Uh, it's it, there's been three different instances where the symbiotes have been absorbed that i that i'm aware of there's the ones where they grow where carnage and lee price grew there's that one where eddie ate the symbiote and that's the end of it <laughs> right. and then there, there's also another time where a symbiote has been absorbed and it's talking <laughs> it's uh I know I had it here. I know we spoke about it the other night, but I can't think of it. The symbiote, yeah, the symbiote stayed inside and was communicating. I guess with Rex, yeah, with Rex he does it. Yeah, Rex, Rex is mm-hmm. Rex is in his head. Right, Rex was in his head at the end of uh, the first arc, the Rex arc, the Atomahawk yeah. Rex arc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, but then that kind of phased out, and we don't really hear uh, Rex anymore because once Eddie fought against the Grendel and burned it, he burned himself. And that seemed to sever his connection, in a way, to the symbiote and to Rex and to um, Null, in a way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, that's right. The third one, yeah. The third one is Donnie's new interpretation of it, where he took Carnage in, and Carnage is in his head for for some odd reason, when in the past it's been shown where it, it just doesn't do anything, you know? Uh, in, in the uh, Planet of the Symbiotes, I know Carnage, when he, he eats the first one, or absorbs it, it he's talking to it and like making fun of it saying oh uh, and and he's like getting information out of it right which is another whole another topic <laughs> but uh, yeah no that's uh, yeah you're right there's inconsistencies there of course and that happens over the course of years and different writers who have different stories and so again not really blaming anyone for anything we're just pointing these things out uh, how how muddy sometimes the, the the continuity gets but uh, but with this, it's like, yeah, he, there's been times where previous car- uh, symbiotes have been digested. Like you said, Carnage can still communicate with it, but he shoves it down. Um, in this case, Eddie bonds with Carnage, which he's done before. He's digested it. And uh, and actually, there you know there was nothing, you know, no, no voice inside his head uh, in the previous time. And this time there was. On Venom Island, he could hear the suit, and that's what made him go to the island and try to separate the Venom from the Carnage suit. Um, I think that's really interesting. So what happened to Venom after he ate Carnage was that um, he joined the Sinister Six, he fought against Sandman, There was, and then Anne Wang died. And then after that, when Eddie was at his weakest, some new villain came along, a guy who was the mayor of New York, and he turned out to be the villain, the new villain on the scene that Spider-Man was fighting, which was obvious from, you know, he could tell from a mile away. And he used his powers to rip the symbiote off of Eddie with this Carnage symbiote inside of it. And he actually kept it as a pet. Uh, it didn't bond with them. I mean, it kind of bonded with them a little bit, and he and he kind of transferred its memories into him as the mayor, and then he was done with it, and it was just a husk, and he just disposed of it. Um, and that's and that, and then all of a sudden, the next time we see Eddie, he's got the symbiote, and Carnage or Cletus had to go to a different alternate universe to get a Carnage symbiote back. Um, so it's really weird. It's like it's yeah. the, the continuity is all over the place. See, I, I mean, we've been talking about all that, and I, I didn't even realize that. See, yeah, you know, you learn something. Like we said the other day, we were talking. You learn something new every day. I, I, I 
breeze right over all that stuff. That's all that. I'm going to have to hunt that down now. <laughs> Hey guys, Seek again, and I'm coming in here just to add something that we couldn't get in when we were recording. We just totally forgot about it because we didn't really script the episode. We kind of just went off the cuff. We just listed our like, you know, eight or nine things that we wanted to talk about. And this was something that I, we mentioned and I totally forgot to include it in the episode. And so I didn't lead the conversation there. So it's not on Eddie. It's definitely on me for forgetting this. So, uh, but Eddie reminded me like, hey, we got to go back and put that in. So I figured I would do that real quick, which is this information here. This comes from, and I saw this on my you know Twitter account by Dan. Dano Cosmic, and he was uh, sharing, or Dano was uh, sharing the um, the uh, post by Love of Comics Five, and so this is what they're showing. It's a uh, it's from um, Astonishing X Men number sixty one, uh, volume three, two thousand thirteen. This came out, and this is a book I do own. It could because it crossed over with an Age of Apocalypse ongoing series that was happening at the time that went to like eighteen issues or something like that. That kind of spun out of Rick Remender's stuff, and uh, and I really liked it. I, I love Age of Apocalypse. I love anything that involves Age of Apocalypse. Even some of the, the wacky sequels and things they try to do to go back to that world. I don't care. I love it. It's my favorite X-Men story. And, uh, you know, among others, like, it's pr really high up there. Uh, but, uh, but you know, anytime they go back to this world, I really love it. And obviously, we've seen, you know, Null be uh, tied to Celestials. And that's, like, a big thing that has happened in Donny Cates' run. And so we have Celestials, and that's kind of the focus of point, uh, you know, focal point of this, is that we have Celestials tying into symbiote lore somehow. So obviously, you know, Donny Cates came along and created Null and with Ryan Stegman and they decided to make Null this uh, you know this god this you know demigod or whatever that is you know the creator possibly of the symbiotes and dates back all the way to the dawn of time where uh, Null has actually faced off against Celestials and cut a Celestial's head off which I think led to the creation of Nowhere so there's that whole storyline that uh, Donnie kind of came up with but there was a time before Donnie got on the book that actually dealt with um, you, know, uh, you know other characters and, and specifically Celestials and what look like symbiotes now they don't come out and say, and you can see the panels up here now uh, from the Astonishing X-Men number 61 book, uh, this is part of a storyline that was called, um, it was like X uh, not extinction or you know it was one of those it was like extermination or something like that but it was they, they've they there's been two extermination stories in like the span of five years this was the first one <laughs> it was like a mid 2010s and stuff and uh, and so this one was uh, or early 2010s I think but this one yeah, 2013, like I said. Uh, this has Celestials in it. You can see how the image on there, and it shows like a Celestial hand reaching down and pulling up the symbiote-looking creatures, um, and then, and then you know, sticking them on to other things, and of course, one of them devouring, or, or at least encompassing, or, you know, covering one of the Celestials. We saw that image recently in Venom number 25, which is right here. I'll put that on screen, and you can see there that there's a Celestial kind of being covered by a symbiote. So I don't know if Donnie is referencing this story as well, or if this is another one of those coincidences but I figured since it kind of happened you know before you know something we've seen in Venom 25 and now it's been you know something that's been before um, but I want to give a shout out because I do have this book and I did read it and I completely forgot about this again a blind spot for me so I can imagine it could be a blind spot for Donnie maybe he you know didn't know this happened um, because but I just thought it was oddly specific like celestials and potential symbiotes uh, it does tie into apocalypse as well and, and the death seed and all the stuff that Rick Remender was setting up in a lot of his runs so you do see some of that, uh, but mainly this one page here where Jean Grey or someone is explaining, uh, it's not Jean Grey, it's someone else I think, and they're explaining kind of uh, the dawn, of, like how their universe kind of got created, because obviously this is happening in an alternate universe, I believe, not the 616, uh, but it, it's showing Celestials and it's showing, you know, a symbiote looking creatures, and I was like, well, that's a pretty big coincidence, so it fit, fit the conversation and Eddie, you know, was bummed that I you know, forgot to mention it, so he could comment on it, so I'm trying to, you know, mention the things that he mentioned to me too, so let me know what you guys think. I just want to include it in before we wrap up this episode, and that's what we're going to do here in a minute. Uh, but I just want to add this last bit in so you guys can see this as well and kind of get your perspective on this. In case you guys haven't read this book, I would recommend it. I'm a big X-Men fan. Like I said, I like Age of Apocalypse. So that's the only reason I read this book because I kind of dropped off of Astonishing X-Men um, around issue like 40 or something. So I never actually read... Uh, I mean, I did read this issue, but only because it was in the giant omnibus of Age of Apocalypse that had all 18 issues of it and the crossovers with this book astonishing x-men so yeah so I, I didn't read this right when it came out i read it later when i got the full you know trade of it and and had the whole run of age of apocalypse in there uh, but i completely forgot about it that i had this page of symbiotes and celestials or p potential symbiotes they don't say it is but they look very much like symbiotes but uh, again just wanted to share it with you guys and add it to this episode and that's why that's why we um you know we wanted to do this episode you know we, we wanted to go through these things because it's like it's not like like i said we are pointing them out 
you know, I, I question some of these, to be honest. You know, I question some of them of whether, you know, as someone, you know, Donnie Cates claims he's, you know, been reading comics since he was three, that he's been working at comic book stores, you know, and that he wrote for Bleeding Cool or whatever w- website. He seems very tapped into the comic book world. So I feel like some of these seem weird that they could have got around him. But at the same time, I'm willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt that these could be blind spots. So that's why it's like this isn't an accusation video. This is, hey, maybe you guys don't know where some of these things have also been done before and maybe you want to check them out yourself. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's, you never know where you're going to find digging in back issues. It's, it's, there's, there's a whole other world out there. It's true. And that's why hopefully this episode encouraged you guys to go check out some of these back issues, you know, from Nova, Venom vs. Rune, Guardians of the Galaxy 13 and 14, Circle of Four, um, Venom Inc., Silver Surfer 64 and 117, 118, Fantastic Four 360 with Dreadface, uh, Carnage USA, Scarlet Spider number two. Like, yeah, like go check all these things out, man. They're weird and wacky and, and they're fun. They, you should, you should uh, definitely, you know, give them a try and, and see if you yourself like them. Do you, any of these, do you like a lot? I know you like contests, but... Uh, yeah, I enjoyed in in contest wasn't a normal book that I usually would have picked up, but it, of all of these, you know, if if you have not read the Planet of the Symbiotes arc, you gotta read it. It's I was going back through it when we were looking up information on this, and I was blown away at how good good it is, and it, and it, it's got some '90s campiness in it, and the arts might not be what you're used to if you're a younger reader, where it's all you know shiny and glossy, but there's just David McLeany writes Eddie and Venom Wright, and and there's just some really great visual. I think uh, Hots is doing the art in most of it, and it's just it's good stuff. <laughs> and this that this a lot of those '90s books are where these writers now are getting a lot of their inspirations from, you know. And regardless of what people say about some of the '90s books, and believe me, there's a lot of word bubbles and there's a lot <laughs> a lot of extended stuff, you know. And everything is its time and place, but there's some good stuff out there that you might not have read. Yeah, I meant to that. And yeah, Planet of the Symbiotes is funny. You te- you text me uh, yesterday or something. And you're like, hey, you should really review Planet of the Symbiotes. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? And you're like, yeah, you should review it. And I'm like, I did. And you're like, when? I go, it's like episode 10 of the Venom. <laughs> <laughs> I did it way back in the beginning because they did Brazil Comic Con that, that year when I started the Venom vlog. I think it was like a month after I started it. They they did that thing where him and Tom Hardy called, you know, uh, videoed in to Brazil at their comic convention and they were like telling them, yeah, actually our movie is based off of Lethal Protector and Planet Symbiotes. And as soon as I heard that quote, I was like, those are the first two books we're going to review and discuss on the channel. And so, I remember watching you do the review of that video too, which I, I know I had to have watched it. I probably commented on it. You probably, that's the funny thing too, is like you were, the other day you were like, hey, um, who commented on your video and mentioned this thing that we're going to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me go check. And I went back and checked, and it was you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you were the commenter. Um, but I, I'm glad you do. I, you know, this is why I wanted to do the episode also is because this is the fruit of engagement. Like, to me, you and I were strangers. You started watching my show. You started commenting. Then you started commenting frequently. And I liked the stuff you were saying. And then, you know, you weren't even on Twitter until recently. Um and I'll put that information down below in case you want some new followers and stuff over there. Uh, but there's, there's, you know, this is what engagement does. It's like you, you start making friends in the comment section and you were starting to say a lot of things that I didn't know before. And you were pointing out things. Swordsman does this really well too. And that's why yeah. I want to I have him on the show at some point because me and him actually disagree on a lot of stuff. And I think that would be a fun, he'd be a great person to talk to um, for, for me. But like he's like, you guys doing that is is what leads to episodes like this, and uh, and so without that engagement, you know, starting two years ago and then and, and continuing with it and and staying a you know subscriber and, and commenting and, and being a friend of mine, it means a lot to me, dude. And I, I'm so glad that you know we were able to put together this list of just fun things to talk about. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was fun relearning some of the stuff, learning new stuff, and you know, as excited as I was to do this, I'm i I'm even more excited to hear what you talk to like some of the other people, especially Swordman, because he's been, it, I'm he's been commenting for as long as I can remember. There's a lot of people, you know, that it, it's gonna be neat to hear their their takes and how and why they got into people's stories on how they get into the stuff, you know. I, 
it, it, it's it's going to be fun to learn. <laughs> Sweet, and I'm going to have you on Parasite Podcast at some point too. So, uh, and that's what he's talking about, Parasite Podcast. I'm going to have I already have seven episodes recorded, and I'm going to be recording another one today, and then um, and uh, I think two more tomorrow. So before the first episode even goes up, I'm probably going to have about ten or twelve episodes, which will be awesome. But uh, I'll, I'll definitely have to get you back on, and we, maybe we can do a, a continuity, you know, story at one point, or like you know, episode at one point. But more than that, more important to me is I would rather if I only can get you on one more time before you know you because I know you're uh, coming up to do more stuff in the military I know you got a lot of uh, things coming are going to be deployed so if I can only get you back one more time I'd rather it be for a parasite podcast where we can just shoot the crap and like and people can get to know you for sure yeah yeah when, whenever I can make time for sure all right and I wanted to, I wanted to say something like if, if for some reason Donnie happens to listen all the way deep into this hey if we didn't care about the character you know we wouldn't comment on it and I have a lot of respect for him doing it. I don't think I could do it any better than he could. And he does a lot of good stuff. <laughs> and I hope, you know, he quit Twitter and he, he took a take time off. I think it's good for him. And uh, if he's got some, some issues, he get it dealt with. And if you know anybody who has, like, mental health issues, anybody out there, make sure you take care of them, you know. Absol- so, but, absolutely. yeah, thank you for writing the books, and thank you, Seek, for covering the stuff. It's, it's, it's appreciated. No, oh, no problem. And he's right, Donnie. I mean, we love this character. That's that's the reason why we, we get critical, and we you know, but we're not personal. Like, we're, you know, we don't make these things personal, and we do feel bad the stuff you're going through. And so if you are hearing this, you know, our thoughts are with you, man. Keep up the good work. Do the best you can. Take some time off. You, you know, you definitely earned it one way or the other. And, uh, and you know, hopefully we'll see. Um, where he goes, you know, there will be more stories of Venom for years and years by Donny Cates, and we'll probably at some point cover all of them and talk about them. So maybe in another fi- uh, 25 issues, you and I can make another one of these of any similarities that we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Eddie, thanks for your time. Um, and again, you're available on Twitter. Anywhere else people can reach you? Nah, nah. If, uh, that or find me in Seek's comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chat with him in my comments. Please do. Um, yeah. yeah, awesome. And uh, thank you again for making time to do this. Again, thank you for your service, and we'll definitely have you on the show again. Sure. Thanks, man. No problem. And everyone else out there, thank you so much for listening. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace. <laughs>